Hey guys, Wells Knight here, and welcome back to another episode of Expedition. And in today's episode, we are definitely setting up a tree farm. I know we wanted to get to that last episode, but it didn't quite work out that way. So let's talk a little bit about what happened between episodes. I did some more exploring. If we take a look, there is a doom-like dungeon uh, right in here. Basically, I, I went exploring down in this direction, and I found a village, and there's a doom-like dungeon right here as well, and I kind of raided that, and I was, thankfully, able to find myself some rubber saplings right here. Sacred rubber, there's the normal ones, uh, which I used to actually make some rubber raw plastic. Uh, I did also find rubber seeds, um, wherever they are, here we go, rubber seeds and emerald seeds as well, which is kind of a lucky break, uh, but I haven't grown them up to 10, 10, 10 yet, uh, or anything like that. We'll get to that. Um, so, other things I did, I upgraded this to a hardened energy cell instead of the leadstone one, and I installed it a, I installed a, uh, a chunk loader right here. This is a very, very temporary location. This is going to go somewhere else later. Uh, but I threw that up for while I was exploring because I wanted this redstone energy cell to charge up. And that thing took a long time to charge. It actually just finished charging uh, like five minutes ago. So uh, it took a little while, but that's okay. Um, oh, and I also have 10, 10, 10 coal, earth, water, and fire seeds right now. Still need to do some of the other ones before we can move on to the next level of AgriCraft. But that's basically the brief, the, uh, the brief version of what I've been up to between episodes here. So, in today's episode, as I said, I want to get a tree farm going because we're going to need a lot of wood for AgriCraft stuff and for other things as well. And, uh, I, I need a reliable source of wood. Like, the, it's just this whole going out and gathering thing, you know, it's not that hard to do when I've got the lumber axe, but at the same time, if I can automate it, why wouldn't I? So, let's start off by making a few basic machines. We're gonna need a planter from Mine Factory Reloaded. That is gonna be the first one. And... Ooh, I don't know that I have any bricks. Um, let's just go ahead and make a few of them. Oh, actually, do I have any flower pots in here? No, I don't. Okay, so let's go make a few of these. And we'll just throw those into our smelter here. Get those going. I'm also processing a whole bunch of ore that I found because I went on a big mining expedition too. But... Come on, come on, there we go. We got our bricks that we need, and we'll go ahead and turn those into flower pots. So, we can use those for the planter. And then we're going to need uh, plastic sheets, and you get those by doing this right there. And then we're going to need a factory machine block, and we'll just use regular stone for that. And... There we go, that will make three factory machine blocks, which should be the exact number that we need, actually. So, uh, let's see, anything else that we're missing here? Oh, a piston. I need a piston. So, one, two, three, four. Grab some planks. Grab a bit of redstone. And an iron ingot. And there we go. That should be everything we need for the planter. Okay, now the next thing I'm going to need is a harvester. And that will be this puppy right here, which is a factory machine block, some plastic sheets, and shears. Shears are obviously quite easy to make. So we'll just go ahead. What am I missing? May oh, it's probably because the shears are not a stackable item. There we go. So we got ourselves the harvester. And then last but not least, we're going to need to get ourselves a sludge boiler. And this is to keep the harvester running at the speed that, uh, at, at maximum efficiency, essentially. So we'll go ahead and make that. And that one was three furnaces and three plastic sheets on top. There we go. So we have all of that. Now, there's a couple other very minor things that we're going to need. Nothing too major. Uh, oh, no, what, what do you, why you do that? 
Uh, we're going to need some sort of storage. So I'm going to make an iron chest. And you know what? Let's go ahead and upgrade that to a golden chest right off the bat. And then we're going to need um, probably something for liquid storage. And I think our best bet is probably going to be a couple of drums from um, Cauldron? Cauldron. There we go. I'll just make a couple of drums here from extra utilities. And basically these will store a whole lot of liquid. So we'll do that. And we'll just go ahead and make two of them right away. There we go. Two drums. And I think think that's everything. Let me just think in my head here. Mm, actually, you know what? Let's also make one final thing. I'm just going to make a couple of caches to store the actual saplings and wood. And there we go. We'll go with that. And that should do it, I think. Yeah, that should be good. Okay. So, we're good to go there, and then we'll take with us, I've got fluid item and energy conduits, and then for the actual types of trees, I think I'm going to go spruce, uh, just because it's, it's kind of the obvious choice, it's very easy to get a lot of spruce wood very quickly, and spruce is a beautiful building block material as well, and it's really dark, so let's take a quick nap before we go tackle this. Um, now, as for the location of our tree farm, I don't want it to be inside the castle, uh, just because there's not really a good space for it unless I hollow out uh, room for it underground, and then we would lose a lot of efficiency unless I made an absolutely huge room, because spruce, the reason that spruce is so good for tree farms is because you can get the 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 double spruce, the two, the two by twos that are just absolutely huge. So I think our best bet is probably going to be to make our tree farm out here. You need to go away, leave me alone. Uh, and actually, you know what? There's one other thing that I, I want to show you. I want to grab a, a, a tool. I don't know if I've shown this to you yet, actually in this series, but it's a very, very useful tool. And I think I've actually got some. Yeah, here we go. We're going to grab ourselves a shiny, sickle. I should only need one. Um, but basically what this will allow you to do is chop down and get rid of a lot of these weeds all at once. So, bam, just like that. That'll help us kind of clear this out because obviously we don't want this stuff interfering with our tree farm. Uh, now for the location, I'm thinking over here, maybe. Except this is not a very flat area, and I kind of hate to wreck the landscape, but I think it might be a necessary evil in this case. And you know what? We are running a little bit low on dirt anyway, so uh, I'm going to make an exception. Normally, I don't like to ruin landscapes uh, by doing stuff like this, but you know what? We need a flat area. We also need a bunch of dirt, and... This will fit the bill. So, this is what we're going to do. Let's get rid of all of this stuff. Now, as for the tree farm, it does not need to be a very big tree farm. We'll get a lot of production out of this thing. Uh, even though... Oh, come on now. Uh, we'll get a lot of production out of this thing, even in a relatively small tree farm, just because of the way that spruce trees grow. Um, and... I'm not going to do anything to speed up the growth rate as well. This stuff will work just fine all on its own, and we'll have more spruce than we know what to do with uh, before too long. So let's clear all of this junk out. And I think that should do the trick. Okay, so the default... Oh, I did forget something. Well, darn it. Okay. You know what? I'm going to head back up into the base. I'm going to get a couple things together and get my inventory organized, and I'll be back with you in just a second.
All right, guys, I am back, and I think I've got everything now that I need. I want to make a pair of these iron upgrades. And what these will do is these will upgrade the range on our machines. The other thing I want to make is this, which is the precision sledgehammer, and that will essentially show me the range on our machines. So that'll be very handy. Um, I did have to gather a little bit more rubber by chop... Mm, excuse me, I got the hiccups. Uh, I did have to gather a little bit more rubber by chopping down some more rubber trees, um, but that wasn't a big deal. So, okay, now we should have everything we need, and the default range for these lovely machines is going to be relatively small. So, if we take a look... At, let's start with the harvester, since this is going to be the big important one. If we take a look at this, it's only a 3x3 three three range, and I want it to face out in that direction. Now, on the other hand, if I take this iron upgrade and throw that in there, that is a much more doable range right there. So that'll work out much better. Now, as for the planter, we'll want to plant that in the center of this area. Which means we're going to want to put it right down here. Like so. And we'll want to put an iron upgrade in that as well. And if we take a look, and we'll just rotate this so you can see, the planter covers this same space. So basically, everything that the planter plants, the harvester can harvest, and that's very important. Okay? Now, we need to connect all this stuff up. So, the easiest way for us to do this, at least in my humble opinion, is going to be just make a little access tunnel down here for us to bring in power and bring out materials. So let's take a look at a few things here. First and foremost, we're going to need a power source. And I think I'm going to run my power source. I might I, actually, you know what, I think I'll probably just put it up here on the surface. It won't be the prettiest thing in the world, but it will make it easy to swap out the battery when I need to do so. Let's also grab some item conduits. And the reason for that is that we need a way to pull items out of here. And then I'm also going to want item conduits coming out, and we want to change that to insert so that we can put items back into this thingy right here. Okay? Now, let's... Oh, that was a mistake. There we go. Okay. And we'll put you right here, and this will be our sapling um, station, I guess, is what we'll call it. It'll be our sapling station. So I will put a cache right there, and we will put in there one spruce sapling, and we want to lock that. So you shift right click, and that should lock it to spruce saplings like so, okay? Then, we'll go ahead and change this to always active, which will suck all the saplings out of there. And it should send them here into the harvester, which is what we want. And is it late enough to sleep? Yes, it is. Okay. So that makes sure that saplings end up back in the system so that it is self-sustaining. Okay. Now, the next thing I want to do is add in one for uh, insert, insert. I want to add one in for logs because we want the logs to go to not right there. We want the logs to go here, and we'll lock that one as well. And then that should all be good, okay? This is a good start. Now, we need to power this. And we need to power that down there as well. So let's go ahead and hook up our power system. And I'm just going to do that 
like this. We'll grab our energy conduits. And I'm just going to hook those up. Running along the same lines as this. Okay. And we can run our power up here. And of course I'm trapped on stuff. That's, that's how it always goes. Is that going to be good? Yeah, that should work. Okay, so you got our power running, and we need this to output from the bottom, which is now powering the harvester, and as you can see, it also powered the planter as well. And we'll change that to consume stack off, I guess. That's fine. All right, so that's a good start. Now, the last thing that I need to do is make sure that when this thing harvests and gets filled up with sludge, that sludge has a place to go as well. So the way that we're going to do that is by hooking up one more machine. And I think we'll hook that one up like over here. Can I? Yes, that will connect through. Good, good, good. So we'll hook that one up like right here, somewhere around there. And then I need my fluid conduits because the, fl the sludge is a fluid, of course. And that is not at the right level. Try that again. Nope. There we go. And now I'm probably trapped in here, aren't I? Of course. There we go. We'll come here. And like so. And those should now take the fluid... From right here, we want that to always active for auto extract. Then we'll bring both the power. Where are my energy conduits? There we go. Energy conduit there. And our sl What? Oh, hello. Oh, I didn't know that this spawned ends. That could be an interesting challenge. That's all right. Then we put our sludge boiler here. It will start filling up. And as this thing receives sludge, it will turn it into blocks like clay and dirt and a bunch of mostly useless blocks. But it will turn it into a useful material. And more importantly, it's going to keep it out of our harvester and keep our harvester from getting all gummed up. So what we'll do with this thing is we'll just run some item conduits. We'll go extract always. And to keep it real simple, I'm just going to run it into a gold chest. And we'll change that to insert. So anything that uh, gets gathered up is going to end up in here. And that should be a working tree farm. Um, there's Now, we're going to go ahead and test it. I'm just going to take the watering can. And water some of this stuff over here. Get some of these trees growing. And we'll try it out. And what we should see is a whole bunch of wood going into here. Which seems to be... Yep, there we go. There goes the wood. Saplings should go back to being planted over there. Go away, Ent. So we should see a bunch more saplings pop up over here in a little bit. And the sludge should go into here, which we can see it doing. Yeah, I think everything looks to be working. We've got more. Are you? Yep, there we go. It is planting. It is replanting the saplings from before. And the Ent got trapped in a tree, which is kind of ironic. I am going to have to figure out something to do about all these Ents, though. Um, hmm. Maybe we'll find some way... Maybe I'll make, like, a grinder for the Ents as well. I don't know. We'll figure that out. And this thing has been producing blocks. So, yeah, we definitely have a working tree farm here. The only thing I'll have to do is swap out this energy cell every now and again and uh, recharge it. But other than that, 
it is good to go. But guys, I am definitely out of time for this episode. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave me a comment. I do appreciate it, and it really helps out my channel. You can also find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. There are links in the video description below, so check that out as well. Otherwise, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll definitely see you next time.